Hey everyone, we're back with another Elder Scrolls Online Beginner's Guide, and today we're going to be covering the basics of crafting. The really nice thing about crafting in ESO is that it's actually useful, unlike in certain MMOs where it's essentially a total waste of time and energy. However, the various crafting systems can be extremely confusing when you're starting out. So my aim by the end of this video is for you to understand the basic concepts and have enough knowledge to get started. I'll also be releasing more in-depth videos for each crafting skill line shortly, so if that interests you, maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, let's get started with the basics. In ESO, there are seven crafting skill lines, and unlike in other MMOs, you're actually able to advance every single one of them on a single character. The first three come under the category of equipment crafting, and these are blacksmithing, woodworking, and clothing. Each of these skill lines has the ability to both craft and upgrade particular items that you're going to use in-game. Blacksmiths specialise in melee weapons such as swords, axes and maces as well as being able to produce various pieces of heavy armour. Woodworkers also provide weapons in the form of bows and staves as well as the ability to craft shields. Then you have clothiers who specialise in light and medium armour. If you own the Sunset chapter, chapter essentially meaning expansion in ESO, then you're going to have access to a fourth equipment crafting line, and that's jewellery crafting. This allows players to create and upgrade rings and necklaces. The core principles of these four professions are almost exactly the same, and you'll understand why a little later in the video when we go into more depth. You then have three additional crafting skill lines that are somewhat more unique in the way that they function. Again, we'll get into the detail of how later in the video. For now, I just want to introduce them. Firstly, you have alchemy, which is going to allow you to create potions from various plants, mushrooms and other reagents that you're going to come across in your travels. Alchemists are also able to combine various ingredients in attempts to discover new kinds of potions. Secondly, you have enchanting, in which various runes are combined to create glyphs that will give you additional bonuses to weapons, armour and jewellery. And finally, there's provisioning, which is essentially cooking, and it involves, well, cooking. As a side note, you also have the ability to craft furniture for player housing, and this isn't actually a skill line in its own right, rather it's an extension of all the primary skill lines we've just listed. Each of them allows you to create different items of furniture to place in your home, and I think we're going to cover that in a different video altogether. Each of the seven crafting skill lines we've just covered can be leveled up by gaining a particular type of experience called inspiration. You gain inspiration by completing various actions in a skill line, such as crafting, deconstructing, or refining items. More on that later in the video. So we now know broadly the kind of items we're going to be able to craft in ESO. However, to produce any of this, you're going to need to start by gathering resources that can be found out in the world. The first and probably most obvious way to gain resources is just to collect them as you travel throughout the various zones of the game. You'll often come across minerals, wood, plants, mushrooms, runes, and many other kinds of harvestable resources. To pick them up, you just need to wander over to them and press E. It's really as simple as that. There are no prerequisites to gather resources aside from your level. Essentially, as you start to reach higher levels, you'll start to see higher level resources appear for you in the world. If you want to make resource gathering a little easier, then you can enhance your gathering ability by spending some skill points. For example, in the blacksmithing skill line, you could put points into Keen Eye, which will make it easier for you to identify ore in the world. Or you could put some points into Minor Hireling, which will provide you with an amount of ore passively each day. As we alluded to a moment ago, not all raw materials are born equal. There are tiers, and to be specific, there are 10 tiers for each type of resource. Using blacksmithing as our example again, you have iron ore, steel ore, and a bunch of others before you eventually hit ruby die ore at tier 10. Now as well as harvesting raw resources, you'll also find useful crafting ingredients in containers such as sacks, barrels and crates. Though be warned if the text appears in red because this will be considered stealing if you take anything from that particular container. The consequence of this is that you'll probably get arrested by the guards and have to pay a fine. One final way you can gain resources is by deconstructing equipment at crafting stations and we're going to get to that a little later in the video. Essentially, as you're adventuring in the world, it always makes sense to pick up as much as you possibly can. This is also unfortunately where we start to see the first serious limitation of free accounts in ESO. Or to rephrase that, the first significant reason to pay the monthly subscription, I guess. This is the crafting bag. Without it, you may find yourself playing inventory management on a painfully regular basis. You do have the ability to expand your inventory through other means, but it's really not comparable to the bottomless crafting bag that you get with ESO+. Plus. Basically, you have to decide what's more valuable to you, the monthly sub cost or the time lost to sort in your inventory. It's really not my place to push you either way. So now that you have a burgeoning bag of resources, you're looking to start turning them into some of the finest wares Tamriel has to offer. Well, we might be a while off that, but we certainly have enough to get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is find a crafting station, and these are available in most major towns and cities. Just look for this set of icons on the map. 
Pause the video here if you need to. There are crafting stations for each skill line and each of them gives you a different set of options. As the basic concepts are pretty much exactly the same for the four equipment crafting professions or skill lines, and that's blacksmithing, woodworking, clothing, and jewelry, we're gonna address them all together using blacksmithing as the example. Then we'll move on to the more unique professions after that. For the four equipment crafting lines, you will notice when you go to a crafting station that you're presented with six different tabs. Let's go for each of them one by one. Firstly, you have the ability to refine resources that we collected earlier. This basically means taking your raw resources and turning them into materials that we're going to need for crafting. Crafting. The 10 tiers of resources that we talked about previously can be refined into 10 tiers of materials that we can use for crafting. As you can see here, we're starting to turn some of our ore into ingots, and it's the same process for the other 9 tiers. As you'd expect, high level materials will allow us to produce higher level items. Speaking of creating items, our next tab actually allows us to craft stuff. With blacksmithing, we have the option to create both melee weapons and heavy armor. You can see here that we're able to adjust the level of the piece of equipment that we're crafting, and higher levels will require more materials. The style component is going to determine how your armor looks, and the trait component is going to allow you to give a specific property or effect to that piece of equipment. In this example, I'm crafting armor in the Breton style. However, if I were to use a different material, I could craft the same piece of armor with exactly the same stats, but say in the Nord style. In terms of traits, we'll take a closer look to that when we get to the research tab, but this is how how you would add one when crafting a piece of equipment. The third tab allows for deconstruction. Essentially, you're going to pick up a lot of items while questing or exploring dungeons that you don't really have a use for. Well, you do now. You can destroy a piece of equipment in order to obtain materials, tempers, tannins, and resins, as well as style and trait components. The tempers, tannins, and resins can then be used in the fourth tab to improve the quality of an item in your inventory. I say in your inventory as it doesn't have to be the one that you crafted yourself. You can see at the bottom that we have a percentage chance of success based on the number of materials we're willing to use to improve the item. Now as you gain a higher level in a particular skill line, the materials required to increase your success chance to 100% will become less. I always personally like to make sure that it's at 100% as it's just too heartbreaking if you get to 80% and fail because you don't just lose all your resources, you also lose the item. So moving on to the fifth tab, which is probably the most confusing. This tab is all about research. Basically, you're able to add particular traits to the items that you craft. One example might be increased regeneration of stamina, health, or magicka, but there are many, many others, and they're all extremely beneficial. Well, to be able to apply these traits to a weapon, you first need to find a weapon that has said trait and research it. Research Research basically means to destroy it, so be careful with the item that you choose to research. This actually takes ages, hours usually, but it can be sped up with certain items and it also progresses while you're logged out. Once you've researched a particular trait and you have the necessary materials, then when you go to craft your weapon, you can actually add that trait to that weapon. The sixth and final tab is for crafting furniture items for player housing. I just want to point out that it's there and you'll see it in the other skill lines as well, but we're not going to go into it in this video. So that's the four equipment crafting stations covered. Let's move on to the final three. We're on the home stretch. At the alchemy station, you can create potions using solvents and reagents that you found during your adventures. Pretty simple. To discover different types of potions, you'll have to experiment, unless you Google it, of course. You need to add one solvent and two reagents. And at first, you're just gonna get a message telling you either that the reagents will not react or that you will get a potion with an unknown effect. There's no point creating one that won't react. That won't work. You need to go for one with unknown effects. Crafting this mystery potion will reveal the properties of the reagents that you've used. So when you create subsequent potions, you're actually going to be able to specify them rather than just guessing. The other thing you can do at the alchemy station is create poisons, and it works in much the same way, but this time you get to equip them to enhance your combat abilities. Let's move on to the enchanting station, and again, it's pretty simple once you get used to it. You're essentially able to combine the runes that you found out in the world and create glyphs that will add new properties to your weapons, armor, and jewelry. As you'll see, there are three different categories of rune, and you'll need to provide one of each to create a glyph. Different combinations are going to produce different results. As you experiment, you'll start to reveal the properties of different runes, and that'll allow you to specifically create different types of glyphs. Pretty much identical to the way we did it for alchemy. The second key thing that you can do at the enchanting station is to extract runes, which is basically the same as deconstructing equipment. You smash up a glyph and you end up with some runes that you can then use to create a new one. The seventh and final station to cover is provisioning, which is really the most simple of them all. You take a recipe that you found during your adventures, and of course make sure you learn it by either double clicking it or selecting it and pressing E in your inventory. Then you just add the ingredients and press the button. Dinner is served. Now before I let you go, there is one more vital piece of information that relates to crafting writs. Come to think about it, I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it, right? Writs? Let's go with writs. Regardless of how you pronounce the name, these are basically daily crafting quests that are worth doing as they're going to reward you with rare and valuable crafting materials. To unlock them, you need to complete a handful of quests to get certified. Now don't worry, they are extremely easy and fast. 
You just need to go to visit a couple of NPCs in your faction's major city. Milenith can be found at the Fighters Guild and she'll give you the quest for blacksmithing, clothing and woodworking. And Daniel Teleno can be found at the Mages Guild and he'll give you the quest for enchanting, alchemy and provisioning. For jewellery crafting you'll need to have the Somerset chapter and speak to Falarion in Alanor. They really only take a few minutes to do and once you've completed them you'll become certified in that crafting skill line and you're able to complete these daily quests known as writs. To pick these quests up each day you need to go to an equipment crafting writ and notice board and you can easily find them in your faction's major city close to the crafting stations. And there we go, that's it. You now know the basics of crafting in ESO and maybe a little more than the basics as you know about writs as well. Anyway, I really hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, then maybe consider subscribing. There's gonna be a lot more Elder Scrolls tutorials coming to the channel in the very near future. Either way though, you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the next